Look guys, in this short video, I want to give you my opinion on John Jones, on his faith in Christ, and how everyone just views him as a Christian, as a Christian athlete, someone representing Christ on the world stage. So you guys must have seen this video I just posted before with John Jones receiving his new Christian themed shorts that have a cross on them and his favorite verse from Philippians. Look, people love to bring up John Jones's past and the amount of times he's been caught doing drugs, the amount of sort of court dates he's had. And I understand that this has happened. This has happened. I understand that perhaps people don't have trust in him as an athlete. Maybe they no longer think that this guy is reliable. You might leave him in Vegas for a weekend and it's, it's a recipe for disaster. I personally understand that all sin is the same in the eyes of God. In the eyes of men, we seem to judge sin differently, but sin is ultimately separation from God. We are distancing, we are cutting off the connection with God whenever we sin in whatever way we sin. So the, the human viewpoint in this situation is not necessarily useful. I rather look at John Jones through the lens of Christ. Now when Christ was here on his earthly ministry for three years, what, what was he doing? How was he treating the most sinful people? He would see the sinner woman, the one being condemned by all the scribes and Pharisees and religious rulers, and he would say, those who are without sin, cast the first stone. Who is it? Who wants to chuck the first one? Come, bring your stone. If you have no sin, throw it. No worries, come. All of them, they drop their stones and they walk away, ashamed. But then there is the second part, which he says, go and sin no more. So when we look at someone sinning, Christ tells us, if you have no sin, go ahead and condemn them. Also, he says, you have, you have a plank in your eye. You want to take that out first and then get the speck in your brother's eye, the small little piece in your brother's eye. But what does he tell, what does he tell us in terms of being forgiven? He says, go and sin no more. Christ was always strict on the hypocrites and he was merciful to the humble, to the sinners, to the broken. So if we want to be treated harshly, we, we should be hypocrites. We should pretend that John Jones is the only one that struggles with sin and that we ourselves are fine. I'm alright, man, don't worry, me, me, I don't, I don't sin. So I'm going to come, I'm going to condemn, I'm going to judge people, I'm going to tell them that they're not worthy of the kingdom, you know. That's, that, that's, maybe that's a good idea, huh? Maybe we should just judge, judge everyone on their faults. Because I don't have sin, of course. I have no sin. Now, why, why would you show mercy to others? This is a Christian concept that if we forgive others, we will be forgiven. In the Lord's Prayer it says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Each time we pray this, we are putting a condition on the forgiveness of our sins. The forgiveness of our sins depends on us forgiving others. That should be terrifying if we're judgmental in nature. That should be terrifying if we like to condemn and to ridicule and to talk about these sort of people, John Jones, Conor McGregor, someone in the limelight, and say they're no good, they're this, they're that. There's so many passages throughout the New Testament where Christ is talking and dealing with different people. All these interactions, or the words of Christ where he says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first, they give me hope for everyone. You know, I can look at someone like Kim Kardashian that's enamored in materialism and probably witchcraft and whatever they're doing, and I have hope. You know, I have hope that these people that have such a such a contrary lifestyle to the gospel can also be saved and not only be saved. But whilst I'm sitting there and judging them and talking about their listing every single bad thing they've ever done, they're going to overtake me. Their repentance is going to be stronger than mine. And I'm going to be stuck back here. And I thought I was up here, then I'm going to go down here. They're going to, they're going to overtake, they're going to go beyond where I am. So I truly believe that. You know, imagine, imagine St. Paul 
Imagine the apostles kept on just bagging out Saul. Yeah, but he's Saul of Tarsus. Yeah, but don't you know this? But don't you know that? Because in the beginning, they were hesitant. Fair enough. But after that, when he starts doing this and this and this, and he's, you know, even in Corinthians, he says, I've labored more than all the apostles, but not me, but the grace of God in me. So this is what can happen to anyone. To anyone so that's why I have that hope and that's why I don't have that sort of attitude towards these these celebrities and people struggling even general people struggling with anything or did you hear they they had a kid before marriage did you hear or oh, he does this or did you know that he I don't care bro like genuinely I don't care everyone struggles I know that I know I got so much sin in me that I need to repent of so it's not my problem you know, pray for them, yeah, but it's not something I'm going to sit there and like be, wow, I can't believe this and I can't believe that, why, because I know myself, I know when you put the right situation, the right people, the right music, the right everything to stimulate me with the music and the scenery, everything, I'm, I'm able to do any sin, so I'm never going to be <laughs> surprised that someone else did it, we're all humans, we all share the same broken human nature, and we're all able to fall in the same ways given the right opportunities. And we who haven't fallen in such ways, we thank God. We say, thank you, Lord, for protecting me from myself, from protecting me from my weakness. Because without you, I would be even worse than them. I will fall into even greater sin and greater despair. So I thank you, Lord, for helping me. That's how a Christian mindset should be. So I'm not saying we should pretend that John Jones isn't doing these things. And just sweep it under the rug just because he's famous and just... No, that's not the point. But rather, we should just focus on our own sin. Is this a cop-out? I don't think so. Why? Because I don't know if John Jones has repented of this sin. I want to bring up the time he was in a car accident five years ago. But has he repented? Has he been forgiven? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's between him, him and God. That's done. That's finished. For me to sit here and keep going and replaying this and rebringing the same argument, all right. But what if he repented of that? And what if I'm still here with my own sin that I haven't addressed, with my own struggle, with the thing I keep falling back into? I have a couple weeks without it. I have a couple months without it. Man, we have our own problems. When we stand before the throne of God, He's going to look at us. He's going to look at our whole entire life, our whole past and say, what did you do with the time I gave you? We have to be accountable for our own actions. Oh, we don't, we're not going to see that be like, yeah, but John Jones did cocaine, and I didn't, so I, do I get to go in? Everyone is judged justly by the just judge. Don't worry about the other people. Focus on our own sin. We need to redeem the time. We have to use it for repentance. Not for judging others, not for lifting up our own ego to make ourselves feel better because we don't struggle in this way. Man, we all struggle in, in different ways. Like, maybe I struggle with gambling and he struggles with smoking. So, am I better because I don't smoke but I'm sitting here gambling 24-7? Is he better because he doesn't gamble and smokes? Forget it. It's both the same struggle coming in different forms. It's both sin. So the fact that we think we're better than other people shows our spiritual immaturity. It shows our own lack of repentance. It's something to think about, something to assess in ourselves. And finally, if we want to talk about someone, we should be praying for them twice as much. If you're really concerned about someone, show that concern through prayer. Intercede for them before the throne of God and ask God to help them with what they're going through. Not just sit there and say, yeah, they're this, this and this. May God help John Jones in his recovery from addiction. May God limit his temptation in his life and shield him from all these demonic attacks. Why? Because I love John Jones. We love each other. We're Christian. We want everyone to come to heaven. We want everyone to repent because that's what God wants. We have to have that same mind of Christ. We have to want the best for everyone, to love everyone and to love everyone is to want them to go to heaven. That is, that is what love is. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share this video with someone else. I'm really trying to put out edifying content. I'm not trying to put out just any sort of random videos. I'm really trying to make this something to glorify God with. 
something to bring into into your house, into your on, on your screens, wherever you are, something for the glory of God. And of course, it's a different sort of means. I'm hoping there's a demographic of young men out there that perhaps aren't clicking on the videos of priests or monks or church stuff, and they see what's this random guy talking about John Jones and Christianity and this and that. Well, let's listen to it. I'm hoping it's reaching the people outside. This is my goal with this channel and I hope you guys can join me in helping spreading this message of faith, of hope and of love of Jesus Christ to people out there. Thank you so much guys.